Hi, and welcome to Le Studio Marco Primo. I've done a few videos about the subjects in the past, but I'm going to do one more today uh, because I've received a few questions in the last few weeks. And this is about signal flow in Samplitude. So, of course, it will apply to X1 uh, up to X8. Uh, there's a few variants, but mostly what I'm going to show today works for all the, the versions. And um, so the question is, what can I do uh, if I want to record um, in real time with the effects printed in my track? That's one question for, from a friend called Donnie. So this answer will be there. And also just the basics of redirecting uh, oxes and uh, buses and where to... Uh, uh, of course, uh, choose the inputs and outputs. So let's go right away. All right, before we begin, let's hit Y on your keyboard to open the setup and make sure that you use the right drivers, of course. Um, there's a bunch of things there. Uh, please install the latest drivers for your interface and choose uh, accordingly. And after that, in the audio devices, you can rename every inputs. So that's what I did. Uh, for me, uh, the preamps are always connected to uh, the UFX, the RMA UFX. So I know that uh, my channel one and two are on an ISA and they are all numbered as a physical order. So I know which one is when I need to uh, decide which input to use. Same thing goes for the playback. Um, of course, if you are running like me, an RMA, the playback are not directly linked to outputs. Uh, to physical outputs. Um, instead, they are in a separate row. So you got the input on the top, the playbacks from the software in the middle, and the physical outputs at the bottom. So I can choose one output and decide which playback goes where. So every headphone output, let's say, will have a different uh, signal. Some may want the click track, some may not. So that's the, the goal here. So a good thing to do is also go into MIDI, make sure that everything that you want to use are checked because they are not checked by default. Uh, you can rename them as well. And uh, once you've done that, you will uh, see all those inputs and outputs, MIDI and audio in the software. So uh, let's see if we take track one. Uh, you can uh, specify that this is a MIDI track, um, the difference, the behavior uh, of uh, the objects will be a bit different, but um, essentially it will work the same and you get all the MIDI inputs, those that I've checked, and of course the outputs as well. Okay, so you you will find any uh, VST if you did load one uh, somewhere in the track. So let's do that. Plugin browser, go into instruments and we'll load anything. Uh, let's say, um, let's load independence. So when you load a plugin that supports multiple outputs like independence does, uh, you get to choose if you want the, the MIDI and the audio on the same track or multi tremble which, which means that the many MIDI uh, channels will be played through this uh, only track. Multi-channel will create a track output for each uh, software outputs in the plugin. So we're going to keep it simple for now. And we're going to load a piano. So when you want to use a virtual instrument or any uh, real-time effect, you need to change the monitoring. Uh, if you right-click right here, 
right? You see now I monitor only uh, the peaks metering and you, I'm going to change it to the total, which uh, will uh, use the mixer and hybrid engine will make the VST works. So if I hit uh, some keys on my keyboard, all right. So right now you're not hearing much because I did not redirect this signal to OBS, OBS, which uh, is the software that I use to capture the image. So what we're going to do, so that's one first thing that is interesting. Uh, our uh, output right here is this, out uh, this output, the master, if I play something, you see. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to redirect right here in the loop back this signal. And now you should hear it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is record a little bit of MIDI uh, on that piano. Aim for recording. And I may uh, use a click. will help. Maybe a little slower. Okay. So what you need to, to know now is that those are MIDI notes. They are not uh, audio. So if I want to uh, export this right now, um, of course I could change the sound. I, I can change the, the VST, uh, the virtual instrument and everything. Uh, I will play, play it back without the click. Okay, uh, but I could change that for something else. Let's say um, a knee piano. Okay, I like the grand piano better. So there's a few ways to convert this as audio instead of MIDI. Uh, usually if you export, you uh, hit Control and E. If you export, usually it will process um, the effects as well, unless you choose not to in the settings. Uh, but let's say I want to manipulate this audio before uh, mixing it. So one thing that you can do is freeze the track. So freezing the track, you right click on it and you choose freeze track. And now this is a audio track. Okay, so you could copy it, hold control to make a copy and drag it on another track. And if I unfreeze the track, I will uh, get back my MIDI data. So one can play uh, a sound uh, and the other one something else. So let's change it for, uh, let's say maybe the classic synth. If I listen to this one alone. Okay, it's a bit loud. And if I put both. Okay, and you can transpose and do whatever you want. Now, after all this, what you need to know is that every track has an independent input and output. So this means that you can change the, uh, the input, of course, of the track. This, this one is a MIDI track. If I go into uh, the audio track, I have all the inputs but you can also input from another track. So if I go there, I can choose to input from track one. And then what it does, if I copy this and I aim record, OK. 
Okay, so what it did is the track two did record in real time what uh, the output of the track one uh, generated from the plugin. So the same way that the track can be frozen, uh, you can freeze uh, the aux. So if I solo, you see the effect is not there. And you get only the effects with the original track. Okay. All right. Another thing that you can do is send those tracks to a bus. So we're going to add a bus. The difference with the, the aux and the bus is that the bus will receive the output of the tracks uh, and the auxes, then they use the uh, sands on top. So you can have multiple, multiple sands um, for each auxes. And of course, the auxes can send a signal before uh, the fader and the effects or uh, before the fader, but having the uh, effects. So if for any reason you want to commit to uh, the plugins or uh, play something live and record right away on the track with the effects, with the, the plugins or a real time instrument, let's say this is played live. Okay, and then you want to send uh, this signal to um, the aux with the reverb right here. So we're going to put it like that. Let's hear how it sounds. So let's say you want to record that reverb alone. Um, for whatever reason, in some of old versions, you could arm for recording and record the signal right away. But this has been changed. Uh, the uh, work around would be to create a new track Let's create a new track. And uh, on each track, you can decide, of course, the input. And uh, in that case, you have all the physical input of your audio interface. And then at the bottom, you can choose the track. So this would be the output of a track. So this could be a virtual instrument or let's say a NAMP simulator for a guitar. And then you, you want to record right away um, the result and not the clean sound plus the effects that is inserted in uh, the track. Uh, so this means that you can create a new track and then choose that track or what we're going to do now is choose the aux, which has the reverb on it. And then we can arm for recording this track and it record. And if we listen to this new track soloed, Okay, so this is the result of this output alone. Um, of course, if we solo this track, you see, same sound. So that would be the way to do it. So if you did not realize the difference between the aux and the bus, an aux, you can send many channels to the same um, aux bus auxiliary bus and of course you can choose different levels at which those tracks goes to the uh, auxiliary bus um, the difference with the uh, sub mix bus is that you can redirect the output of the tracks so of course the aux when you send it, it does not change the output that may go to your main channel. Uh, but if you do use a submix bus, it does not send anymore to your main channel. It goes to that submix bus. If you change the levels on the faders, it will change what goes to that submix bus. Both can receive 
plugins and it, of course that sound will be um, mixed up in the auxiliary bus or in the submix bus of course if you lower the submix bus it does not only lower the effects it lowers also the tracks so you get one single knob for the effects on the submix and all the tracks. So that's one of the, uh, the difference. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click on the like button, consider subscribing, hit the bell to get notifications. If you do some video works, I do have a rebate on Dehancer, which is a plugin for many uh, editor video editor so go in the description there it's there and of course a uh, way to help the channel is to click on many videos and share those videos it's always a great help